되신 주 예수 빛으로 오셨도다 생자를 주셨네 누구든지 그를 믿으면 생명을 얻으리라 그 사랑 승리하셨네 참된 소망을 다시 주셨네 십자가 나의 영광 그 사랑 내 생명 그 사랑 내 생명 예. 이 강의장을 완전히 압도하는 그런 감동이었죠. 자, 맹자의 어머니가 세 번을 아들을 데리고 이사를 다녔듯이 우리 김기영 님도 저 뭐예요. 그 그렇게 뉴 스타트를 통해서 이렇게 완, 완벽하게 나신 분 집으로 이사를 갔다 그래 작정을 하신 분이시죠. 예. 그렇게 작정하시면 뉴 스타트를 통해서 병이 안 낫는 것이 기적으로 변하게 됩니다. 자, 아셨습니까? 자, 이런 분위기에서 뭐 다른 생각 할 것이 없죠. 다 같이 일어나셔서 걱정을 모두 벗어버리시고 힘차게 부르시겠습니다. 
Good to see you. Let us start with a prayer. Father, you are love. Father, you are our creator. Even though you're wretched, you always give us the free love of choice. Even though you knew that we are going to make a wrong decision, you already knew that you were going to suffer because of our wrong choice. But you still give us the freedom of choice. Father, pour your spirit on us so that we can understand this wonderful love. You know, this wonderful love true love, beautiful love, and good love. When we understand this love, we know we are going to be happy. Please be with us in this place. Help us to realize this wonderful love. Pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. God created me. The word itself has power. It means because God is love. He really wanted to have an object to give his love. He has full of love in him. You know, it is very painful if you can't give love, even when you have full of love in you. And that is why God created us. But because, you know, God is almighty, omnipotent, so he already knew what is going to happen if he creates us. He could predict This morning, I introduce you P53 genes, which produces tumor suppressor protein. God already knew that we have possibilities to get, you know, cancers, even before he created us. So even though we live a, those cancer possible life, he wanted to protect us. He wanted to be healthy. So he programmed this P53 genes in our cells. And he already programmed and planned this wonderful program, this healing program in us when we get sick. Now, you know, this, you know, these doctors in the world now, even though they are really good, they can't understand this program. You know, if they say these programs are made spontaneously or with evolutionary theory, evolution theory, that is nonsense. The more complicated design you need higher intellectual being. You need more intellectual beings. So we need to learn from ourselves that because we are very complicated, you know, beings. So as we look at ourselves, 
We have to know. We should know. We should be able to know the existence of Creator. Even to make this water bottle and the bottle lid, the more the machines get complicated, they need more or higher supernatural you know, intelligence. You know, we can't make those things, those genes in our bodies. Then we should admit the existence of our creator. That is honest. But because we don't want to admit, we just say, you know, we are created spontane we are made spontaneously. We can't really explain these things. Now, God created us. Why did God give us the freedom of choice? I think I think God is not greedy at all. He's not ambitious at all. As I read this Bible, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, this morning we read these Bible verses. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 7. Here it says, bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Now, chapter 13, verse 5. Love does not behave rudely. Love does not behave rudely. Now, what is rude? Do what I say. Why? Because I love you. That is rude. We think it's okay to be rude if you love someone. But God's love is not rude. His love is so wonderful. He doesn't behave rudely. And love does not seek its own. I think the translation is not right in Korean version. Now there it says, God is not provoked. You know, we get angry in the name of love. I love you. How come you don't listen to me? I love you. You know, if you say, if you say you don't want to have this chemotherapy, then, you know, people are very upset. Why? In the name of love. When you read the Bible, you will realize that how we can be foolish when it comes to love. Love is not rude. Uh, love does not get angry. Now, God cannot be angry with us because he gave us the freedom of choice. So that's why love should be patient. Until we make the right choice, he shouldn't be rude. He shouldn't be angry, but he should be patient with us. As we read 1 Corinthians chapter 13, we know God has this love because he gave us the freedom of choice. Mm, here I said love does not Seek its own. I don't really understand in Korean version. Well, I looked in. I looked it up into English version. Love is not rude, and love is not self-seeking. Well, well, in case of Koreans. This is, you know, difficult, this verse. Let's look at this translation. Love does not insist 
on its own way. Insist. What does that mean? Insist. You insist. Get the chemotherapy treatment. Now, if you don't want to get it, if that's your choice, then I will respect your choice. That kind of love is God's love. It is not irritable. Love is not irritable. Or regentful. Love is not irritable or regentful. I like this translation. But then... And that's why God thinks he's right, but then he doesn't insist his own way. You know, me, myself, I thought I really loved my children. But, you know, as I read the Bible, I realized that I, you know, didn't know how to love my children. Now, if you don't love your children, you just can you can just say, do whatever you want to, then then that's all. But if you love more and more, it's very difficult to say do whatever you want to. Why? Because you have a very intimate relationship with them. It is not easy for me to say do whatever you want to do. Well, if you have nothing to do with them. If you don't have a good relationship with them, then you just can do whatever you want to. You know, I don't care. But if you have a very intimate relationship, it is not easy to say, do whatever you want to. Especially to creators, in case of creator, it is very difficult. I'm sure it would be very difficult for him. You know, when we make something, we make it to do, to, you make, when you make something, you want to do whatever you want to do. That's why you make it. You make it for your own good. You make it to use it. You know, but God created you know, us, but then he doesn't want to do whatever he wants to do. But he let us do whatever we want to do. Isn't this wonderful? You know, as I study the Bible, I realize this love. And I was thinking, hmm, I'm sure I will be in trouble. You know, I used to you know, gather my children, and I say, your goal is you should go to Harvard or Yale University. If you can't go to Harvard University, then, you know, I will lose my face. If you go to Harvard University, I will support everything. I will get you a sports car, and I will pay for your tuition and everything. So you should go to Harvard University. Why? Because I love you. My children thought the same way. But after I studied the Bible, I realized that, hmm, I told them to go to Harvard University because I love them. No, th I was wrong. I told them to go to Harvard University for my own pride. You know, in our, you know, class, like doctors, among doctors, um, doctors say we are smart, we are intelligent. Now, how can you prove that? Our children will prove my intelligence. So, you know, they're very serious about this and their children's education.
So I didn't give them the, f I didn't give them freedom of choice in the name of love. So I decided, I decided to behave like God. So I gathered my children again. At that time, my children, 10 years, nine years old, and four years old. Now I told my children, you know, you know I you know believe in God. My children, by the way, didn't like it. As you know, I'm a Christian. I believe God. And as I studied the Bible, the Word of God, God gave us the freedom of choice. Do you know how much? You know, um, I was 39 years old. You know, God gave your daddy the freedom of choice not to choose him until, you know, now. He gave us this freedom to choose God. You know, God has been patient with me for 39 years. He was very patient because love is patient. You know, love is patient. And my children, they nodded. You know, God gave your dad the freedom of choice. Now, how can I limit your cho freedom of choice? Whether you believe God or not, that's also your choice. Because... You know, I go to church, you don't have to come to church with me. Whether you go to Harvard or Yale, you should choose for yourself. So I will give you the freedom of choice. You know, my children couldn't believe me. They looked at each other. What's wrong with dad? What's happening with him? Because, you know, I used to tell him, if you don't go to Harvard University, there's going to be no sports car, you know? You know, save my face, kids. I used to say that. So when I get home from the hospital, you know, they're watching TV, right? Okay, but then they pretended that they're studying as soon as they heard me. So I'm sure they've been stressed. So, you know, I'm sure they didn't like me coming home, coming back home, because they had no choice. They had no freedom of choice. There is no relationship without freedom. So I gave them the freedom of choice. And then my first daughter, you know, when they looked at each other, they said, my first daughter said, shoo, shoo, now I'm fine, I'm safe. You know what I was thinking at the time when I heard? Hmm, freedom is life, surely. So no freedom, give me death. So if there is no freedom, it's like you're dead. So I realized that when I heard my first daughter said, I'm safe. So now, wow, I did something good because now I know my children are alive. But I didn't know how long could I keep this promise. So I decided okay, to keep 
my words. Then something happened. You know, at that time, I was quite popular among Americans. I was giving lectures to Americans at Weimar. So almost all Seventh-day Adventists knew me there. They knew me as Seng Li. They knew me as Seng Li, Dr. Seng Li. So sometimes they call me Sang Sang. You know, so most American Seventh day Adventists knew me. And then they, you know, thought, mm, he's a good man, he's a faithful doctor. You know, that kind of reputation. So my children said, Daddy, we want to go to church. That's our choice. So I said, okay, that's wonderful. So they started to go to, you know, Seventh-day Adventist school, academy as well. And, you know, because they go to Seventh-day Adventist school, you know, academy, you know, they got treated really well. Oh, they are saying these daughters, you know. Anyways, you remember th that my first daughter, okay, I spanked her a lot. Why? Because, you know, she did something bad to her sister. Anyways, my first daughter felt so in s inferior or, you know, she felt so timid or... She felt something missing because, you know, her her sister, her younger sister studies really well. She's prettier and so forth. So she, my first daughter, wanted to, you know, put more makeup on. You know, outwardly, she wanted to make herself better. She was about 14 years old. She came to me and said, Dad, I need to make a decision. She said, you know, I want to pierce my ears. You know, these days, maybe, yeah, it w it's very common, but tw uh, it was about 20 years ago. Now, 20 years ago, as a Sabbath-day Adventist, now you pierce your ears, hmm, that's very rare, that's something. But these days, yes. But because Sabbath-day Adventist is very, you know, conservative, right? So, you know, we don't, you know, Seventh-day Adventists don't like, you know, girls to wear very thick makeup, you know, because, you know, Seventh-day Seventh Adventists, um, they want to have a very humble life. So as you look at those Adventists, you will know, you, you know, I'm sure you notice that we don't wear rings or we don't have earrings or, you know, those kind of, you know, jewelries all around. You know, my watch is... Just like a couple of dollars, ten, twenty dollars. Anyway, my daughter wanted to pierce her ears and have earrings. And all of a sudden I was upset, but I couldn't because I gave her the freedom of choice. From that moment, I started to realize what God's love is. Wow, it is very difficult not to get angry. Well, if you can say like, if you love, you know, you can't get angry. But it means you don't understand the Bible. There it says, love is not rude. Oh, it's not an easy thing. But then you become very thankful. I became very thankful because God loves me in this way. And when you are thankful, you get the spark. This is the truth of love. When you realize the truth of love, 
the spark will come and my turned off genes will be turned on. Oh, God loves me in this way. Hmm, that's what he means in the Bible. And then you like God more, even. You know, Apostle Paul, I'm sure he deeply understood God's love. So when he wrote down these Bible verses, I'm sure he was very excited and happy. But then readers, we don't get excited when we read these Bible verses. You know, that's the problem with the article. You know, I try to write a book, and I say, genes respond to meaning. You know, what a sentence. So, you, you know, when I give lecture, I can repeat our genes respond to meaning. I can repeat this sentence more and more and more again and again. But, you know, when you write a book, you cannot repeat this same sentence again and again. That's the problem with article or writings. So let's say I say this, you know, amazing sentence, our genes respond to meaning. But then what about the readers? I'm not sure what would the readers think. I'm sure the Bible writers feel the same way. Love. Love does not, love is not provoked. Love is not rude. You know, those words, when they wrote these Bible verses, I'm sure they're very thankful, they're very touched. Anyway. My daughter said, Dad, you have to come along with me. You have to come to the jeweler's, jeweler's store with me. Because, you know, they pierce our ears. Well, those who are more than 16 years old, you know, they can go by themselves. But I am only 14, so you should go with me and you have to sign there. so that I can pierce my ears. So I said, can you think two more days more? So I said, uh, think if you really need this or not for two more days, please. And then I started to pray very hard. Well, I couldn't stop her because I gave her the freedom of choice and I couldn't be angry with her. Two days later, she came back and she said, you know, I want to go, Dad. So I took her to the jewelry store and I got the paper and I signed there. Now, problem is, look at Seng Li's daughter. She pierced her ears. You know, then that is something. But if I gave her the freedom of choice, then you know I should be ready for that blame. You know, you know those conservative peoples in the church, right? You know, even Christians don't practice this First Corinthians love chapter. You know, there are many Christians. They say, mm, "How come you let your children so and so and so?" You know. Christians, some Christians, most Christians don't give, you know, people or themselves freedom of choice. They're worse than other people even. Wow, it's very difficult to be the church member, huh? Wow, Seng Li, that popular, that famous Seng Li will lose his face, but because I promised her to give her the freedom of choice. So I, you know, let her. And I realized how righteous our God is. Because he's so righteous, he promised, he keeps his promise. He's so righteous. Why? Because he keeps his promises all the time. 
If he doesn't keep his promises, then he's not righteous. But he's, cr he's righteous. Why? Because he keeps his promises all the time. Now, he gives us th the freedom of choice, so he's not angry with us. But then these days, many people say, well, God is very angry with those bad people. God punishes those bad people. Well, if people don't realize that he, gives, he gave us the freedom of choice, then the whole concept, whole definition will be distorted. And that will misunderstand all the time. Now, we feel like love and righteousness are on the opposite side. But remember, love, his love and his righteousness met on the cross. That's what the psalmist wrote. Anyway, I wrote, I signed, you know, I was ready. I was ready for all the blame from my church members, those legalistic, those conservative church members. Now, I'm sure when they see my daughter's, you know, yearing, they will say, hmm, we thought Sangri is so good and faithful, but hmm, he's not. So I was ready. You know, that is the cross. God was ready to be misunderstood. Now, let's say, you know, very faithful Christian, but then you get a cancer, then those people, non-Christians would say, hmm, even though you believe God, hmm, you get a cancer, so, okay, there's no good. But remember, God always respects our decision. God cannot stop us. Not, God cannot stop us not eating uh, bad food. You know, God cannot close our mouth so that we don't eat those things. But then those non-Christians say, hmm, even though you believe in God, but you get a cancer, hmm, so what is God? Does he protect you? So, you know, God is... been misunderstood. God has been misunderstood by many people in many different ways. Anyway, she pierced her ears and she got very shiny earrings. So as I saw her, even though I was ready, oh, I was upset. Oh. Oh, what a daughter. I was upset. So I prayed, God, please help me to be righteous. Help me not to post cancel my promise with my children. By the way, so the atmosphere was very... Not peaceful. It wasn't peaceful. Now, if I cancel my promise and I say, well, take those earrings off. So she was afraid. So I didn't say anything and I said, let's go. Get on the car. I was driving. Looking straight ahead. You know, while I was driving, God was speaking to me. Sang Lee, why are you upset? You gave her the freedom of choice. Isn't this rude right now? What you are doing is rude. And I said, yes, I know I'm rude, but, you know, I can't help it. So God said, pray. I will strengthen you. So I said, okay, I'll pray. You know, you don't have to close your eyes to pray. So I was driving, and God, my daughter, <sighs> please, please help us to remember that 
There are more grace where there are more sins. Please empower me to love her more. I was praying. And my daughter, Daddy. And I said, please, Father, help me to put a smile on my face. So I said, why? Dad, please tell me you love me. I am afraid. When I heard that, oh, I felt so bad. So I put my hand around her shoulder and I said, I love you. After that, after I told her that I love her, then I feel good. And I said, I'm sorry that I was rude. I'm sorry that I was upset with you. I'm sorry. And my daughter said, it's okay. So even though my daughter pierced, the, even though my daughter pierced the ears, I w- I didn't want to break our relationship. That is our God. Even though we sin, even though some people killed somebody else, but God doesn't want to break the relationship with the murderer. That is our God. Somebody said, wow, that's good. I'm safe. Somebody said in the back. She's using his dad. Oh, and um, he's and he's, his daughter said, Phew, I'm safe. I'm sure you will you know, have a lot of trouble to raise your daughter, mister. Now give all things to God. Now I said, okay. Let God take everything. And then let's love my daughter. Now, you know, vacation finished. Then she had to go back to her school. Before she goes back to her school, you know, I prayed so hard so that she could take off her earrings. But that was my prayer. You know, I cannot force her to take her earrings off. You know, the the day was very hot in California, you know. It was very hot, summer day. But then my house, we have a swimming pool. So, you know, kids, my neighbor, you know, my neighbor kids all came. And they they swam. But then my daughter couldn't get into the swimming pool because she pierced her ears. And my daughter says, Dad, I really want to swim. Should I just, should I just take off you know she doesn't want to take off but th- she just says you know take off you know girls they confuse men you know she doesn't want to take off but she just says it. she says like she wants to but then you know if I say okay then take them off then they are very upset because I told them to take off you know so women are very complicated they confuse men Every husband, one or two years later, you know, men think, every man thinks that, hmm, my wife has some problem, mental problem, it's okay. <laughs> think like that. You know, she's okay. Your wife is okay, mister. You know... You know, man cannot imagine the way woman thinks. (laughs) 
Anyway, my daughter came and asked me. So I said, well, if you want to, take them off. And she said, I don't want to. Ah. You know, as I raised my children, daughters, I, you know, kind of realized what women are like. I didn't have any sisters. I had a brother. And my mother, she's not a, you know, you know, woman, woman, you know, she's very strong. So I thought every woman is like my mother. My mother never confused me. But as she, you know, grows older, I think she sometimes confuses me. You know, my first daughter, you know, she makes turns when she sleeps. Uh, because the way she sleeps um, actually get her ears infected. So I, you know, I took care of her. So my daughter says, should I take them off, Dad? It troubles. They trouble me. Hmm. So I said, well, if you want to, we'll take them off. And she said, no, I don't want to. <laughs> so when she said, should I take them off? Then I was like very, you know, excited. But then she always said, no. You know, three, four, four or five days later, her infection got better, but then she got another infection. Because she always makes turns. This way and that way and this way and that way. So, you know, I treated her again. And she said, should I take them off? She asked me again. So I said, so I said, well, don't say, you know, don't say that word, okay? If you want to keep them, just keep them. Because you decided to, you know, pierce ears, then, you know, keep them. It was about like a week later. A week later, I couldn't see her earrings. I said, so what happened? Why did you take them off? And my daughter said, hmm, it's not really nothing. It's nothing. So according to her choice, she pierced the ears and she take them off. Freely, she could do that. Freely. That is real. God wants us to make that kind of choice. Real choice. No pressure. With your freedom of choice. And now you know why God gives us the freedom of choice. But it is very difficult to practice. You know, when you make something, you want to control. You want to do whatever you want to do. But then God is very patient with us. God is patient until we make the right decision. Love bears all things, believes all things, and hopes all things, endures all things. God believes us because he, he thinks he will make, we will make the right decision. He believes us. If you love someone, even though everybody says you have no hope, but then you have to believe that, you have to believe and say, you have hope. You can make it. You will get well. Now you have to hope for those things. You have to believe those things. That is love. You know, doctors say, well, you have six months left.
you know, then I said, you know, even though I love you, you know, I just said, you know, doctor said you have six months left. Mm. Oh, I'm sorry, you have only six months left. But if you really love, you know, someone, then you should say, you know, even though doctor says six months, but I believe that you will get better. I believe you, will, you can make it. Scientifically, you can't believe it. But if you admit the existence of creator, existence of God, then you can believe that that person can make it. Even though the doctors say, you know, the person has only six months left. So without God, there's no right love. There's no true love. You know, you know, you feel like that is love. But you feel like you love someone, but if your love doesn't fit with the teachings of the Bible, then you have to admit that your love is not a true love. When you admit it, you will find more of God's love. Now, once you realize God's love, then you, this Bible verse will come to you for real. Genesis chapter, chapter 2. Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. Um, chapter 2, verse Genesis chapter 1, verse 27. God created man in his own image. His own image. You know, let's say if a man is a lump of flesh, then, you know, that's meaningless, worthless. But when God created man, according to who? In his image. According to his image, his own image, he created us. This Bible verse tells you tells us how precious we are. His own image. In his own image. In the image of God, he created him. What does this mean? When God's love comes into your mind deeply, then your mind will be changed into God's mind. Your image also can be changed into God's image. You and me are that kind of people. Isn't that wonderful? As after I read, yes. I want to do this. I want to try. I want to I want to do this. God created us to have his own image. In other words, let's say when we have a very intimate relationship with God, when other people, you know, looks at those people, those people who have very intimate relationship with God, then people would say, hmm, if there's God, he would look like them. He created us. He created us in his image so then if we have his heart, his mind, we can be transferred. We can look like God. 
You know, Eugene's mother a lot look a lot better. No wonder why Eugene is very pretty. I'm very surprised. You look a lot better. Your complexion looks very well. Eugene's mother was not a uh, not an ordinary woman, but she looks very comfortable today. Um, I what I mean, she was very dominant okay, over family, but she looks very peaceful, very peaceful complexion. I mean, face. She didn't believe in God, but you know, she came here last time, and then she practiced n new start. And right after session, she stayed for the Bible study. And after that, I know she's you know studying the Bible. And after that, now you know sh she has totally different image. Congratulations, God bless you. If you saw her <laughs> last time, ooh, she was something. She was always rigid, upset, facial expression, but oh, she looks very comfortable. So our image can be like God's image. That's how we were created in the beginning. Wonderful. What a wonderful story. Even though we are ugly now, but we can show God's image through us. Don't we have hope? Yes. Don't you want to try? Yes. It's worth trying. Let's try this. Let's pray about this. And you become happy and you become healthy. New Start is not only about overcoming your disease, but the essential goal of New Start is to restore God's image in us. So from false ego to true ego. No, true ego means God's image. You know, we want to be reborn with true ego. And when we become, you know, when we go closer to God, then we will have the image of God in us. That is our goal in life. In the process, we will learn how to love people. We will learn how to cover others' shortcomings. We will learn how we can be happy when we help other people. Now, when we do that, we will understand God's heart more and more. God already knew those kind of process is going to be very difficult, but then he gave us the freedom of choice. You know, sometimes we blame God, you know, like, if there is God, how can I get sick? But remember, God wants to rebuild wonderful relationship with us and he wants us to have his image in us you know god would be very very pleased when we do that but when we do that we will also be very happy god is happy we are happy and we all look alike each other We'll have, you know, our own images together and we will live in heaven forever, eternally. Let's say there's no heaven, okay? Let's, let's imagine there's no heaven. Now, 
No, what is a better life? There's no heaven, okay? Then you don't believe something because it doesn't exist. But then you believe even though it doesn't exist. It means you believe means you have hope. When you have hope, you can have a healthy life. But, you know, if you believe something that doesn't exist, that is very unhappy. So please don't believe something that doesn't exist. But, you know, it is good to believe something that exists. You know, that is very beautiful. You believe something that exists. That's beautiful. You know, there's disease, there's health, there's hell. You know, this world is hell. This world is the world of disease. Now you got sick, but then you become healthy. Then from this, you know, evil world, if there is evil world, then there is heaven. Don't you think so? There must be heaven if we have this uh, evil world. Because we have an evil world, there must be heaven. And you say, hmm, if, you know, you know, look at that person. I feel like there's devil as I look at that person. Yeah, we do have that kind of people. Some people said, yes, you know, and I said, who? My hus husband, you know, they said. In fact, when we are very angry, look, look, your, look at yourself into the mirror. And you say, if there is devil, you know, he will look like me. Now remember, it depends on whether you listen to the voice of life and whether, uh, or you listen to the voice of death. We can be changed according to what we choose. You know, even, you know, in between 10 seconds, you can be changed. Remember, walk with God continuously. And remember his original program. Please, walk with God and show his image through you. When you have his image in you, you will be healed. with God, with New Start, with everybody. Even though there is no heaven, restore His image in you. That is heaven. Why don't you try this? You know, that's worth it. I hope your goal doesn't stop where you get well. But then I pray that your goal is to restore his image in you. I hope you choose that. <laughs> Let us sing God is good.
Father, you created us. Father, you created us in in your own image. Thank you so much for this wonderful truth. Thank you so much for this hopeful truth. Lord, I know you can change us. Sometimes we say, how can I restore his image in us? But that is impossible with us, but it is possible with you. Father, please help us to encarve your word and your will in our hearts and help us to attain this goal in our lives so that we want to know you more in our lives and we want to understand your words more. We want to realize your wonderful love so that we don't only have goal to get better, but we want to respond to your will. We want to know your will so that we want to have your image in us. So through the process, we know that we will get well. Please, Father, keep us. Earnestly pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Now let us encourage each other. Have a very good night. Restore God's image.